Welcome to the wonderful world of click and play. In the late 90s, early noughties, the world of indie games was a very different place. I don't think people even called them indie games back then. People would share them online or get them off CDs through your magazines. No one seemed to be making any money, and no one, it felt like, was really a professional. A lot of amateurs like myself had started making games with easy to use tools like click and play, and had gone on to its later derivatives like MMF. There was a whole community based around the weird little games we were making. It was called the Click Community. And the very best Click games inspired awe in us all. Games like Destruction Carnival, Butterfly 660, Eternal Daughter, Anything by Mark Pay, or even Space Herdy. Okay, kid. Let's see you hurt some sheep. I'm about 14 at the time. I look like this. My favourite bands are the Smashing Pumpkins and Radiohead. My favourite games are Zelda and Star Fox. And thanks to Click and Play and MMF, I'd already been making my own games since I was 11. I'd finished a few games, I'd abandoned plenty of others. But after watching the first Lord of the Rings film, I was inspired to make the game that I'd always wanted to make. A game with story. A, a game as epic as Destruction Carnival. Or maybe even epica. So I ran home, I loaded up MMF, I made a man with an epic name, I made a sword with a less epic name, and I knew it wouldn't be long before I'd be playing the game of my dreams. I mean, how hard could it be? Yes, this is the story of how one man unwittingly spent half his life making the game that time forgot. Because in the years it took me to make this game in my spare time, we'd seen three British Prime Ministers, two American Presidents, the arrival of Steam, XBLA, WiiWare, Humble Bundle, the release of Cave Story, Braid, Fez, even Duke Nukem Forever. The world and the indie game scene had left me behind. So yes, this is the game that time forgot. And I'm gonna let you in on the reasons why it took so long, so no one ever makes the same mistakes again. If I go down, I'm taking you with me! There are six main reasons why this hobby got so out of control, and they can be summed up as follows. Six A's, easy to remember. The first A is for ambition. A lot of games like to create one game mechanic and reuse it over and over again. But young me was too good for that. With every room and level, I was always trying out new things. Weird puzzles, big set pieces. I might spend ages programming, say, a puzzle where you can move a mirror and grow a giant plant. But once that was done, you'd never see it again. In this way, the first day could also be for ADHD. By constantly hopping to a new puzzle, new baddie, new idea, it took me ages just to finish a single dungeon. The second A is for absolutely no idea what I was doing. Basically, when you start making a game, you're meant to spend ages working on the engine, but I didn't. Instead, I picked platform movement from a bunch of presets and tried to make it work. These presets suck. If I wanted to make, say, a moving platform, I'd have to clumsily tack on a load of code onto the preset, making for a weird chimera of a game engine. This led to a lot of tweaking and retweaking, and after finishing the whole game, I eventually said, do over and program the entire engine from scratch, which of course had to be tested on every single level in every single room. No, no, no. The third A is for all those graphics. The graphic style you choose makes a huge difference in how long it takes to make a game. In my case, I made all the graphics too big. Look at Cave Story Guy or Knit or Eternal Daughter compared to my guy. He's big, and bigger characters means bigger levels which means more years of my life wasted. My second problem with the graphics was this. Consistent lighting. Have you ever noticed that when Mario faces right, he's lit from the right? And when he turns around, oh man, the sun moved! It's kind of a lazy shading technique that most games use, but when I set my graphic style I was like, no, it's got to be consistent, and that meant shading every frame of every sprite twice. The fourth A is for aging. 13 years takes its toll. I mean, this is what I looked like when I began this game, and this is what I look like now. As I aged, I got better at graphics and programming, but this meant I kept having to redo the earlier elements that didn't match up to my standards. For instance, I'd got about three quarters through the game before I realised that I was still working with the same crappy Tobias sprite that I'd made six years earlier. Cue me redoing tons of animations just so he looked passable and, you know, had lovely belt. Mmm. The fifth A is simple but dangerous, always sticking to the plan. In my plot, Tobias is fighting the source of all evil in the universe, seriously. And so that wasn't the sort of story that could be resolved in four levels and a final boss. No, I early on got locked into some epic plan like dungeon boss, dungeon boss, dungeon 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 dungeon, big boss, dungeon, big boss, final boss, super final boss. So that even when I was at university thinking, shouldn't I have finished this game by now? It just didn't occur to me that I could lose a few bosses and levels and it'd be fine. Always sticking to the plan killed me. 
And so lastly, the final A, albatross. I mean this like a psychological burden that hangs over a person. It basically meant that I couldn't just give up on the game. It wasn't really arrogance or pride or some voice in my head saying, Never give up. Trust your instinct. It was the fact that I'd already just come so far. I'd already put in five years, seven years, ten years, and I could just feel the weight of all that expended effort. It meant that I couldn't give up now, after all this time. Just one last push and it'll be done. But of course, that was a vicious circle. A vicious bloody albatross. But eventually, I finished with the albatross. And I finished, I finished this really weird game with puzzles that are really odd and difficult, with its stupid overwrought dialogue, with its way of starting out being really simple and kind of crappy looking and gradually getting more complicated and actually pretty good, and those endlessly multi-stage bosses and its cutscenes trying to be cinematic. I mean, maybe this doesn't hold up to modern standards of an indie game. Maybe it doesn't hold your hand enough, flow well enough, or even work on a Mac. Maybe it is just an amateur project that got stuck in a time warp, and maybe that means that some people will hate it. But maybe some people will love it as well, because deep down, I guess I love it. I love it because, despite all its flaws, it's the game I always wanted to make, and no one, not even the grown-up 26-year-old version of myself, could tell me otherwise. While I'm glad of how far indie games have come, and how much I have changed, it does feel good to remember where we started.